Hi everybody. Let's talk about the fundamental theorem of algebra. All right. Basically the idea is, and this is what it says, is that a polynomial of degree n has n complex zeros. And these zeros may be repeated. Now what this really means is it's kind of a common sense thing that if it has a degree of five it will have five zeros those zeros might be imaginary those zeros might be real if you remember the word complex means both real and imaginary numbers okay so what we're going to do today is we're going to apply the fundamental theorem of algebra to actually write polynomials given the roots okay and the idea is let me move this down just a hair and let me talk about it the idea here is that when you write a polynomial it is usually of the form of p of x equals x minus c1 x minus c2 x minus c3 dot 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 x minus c n okay depending on the degree if it has a degree of 5 this would go from c1 to c5 if it had a degree of 10 this would go from c1 to c10 but you get the general idea so when you have a polynomial that looks like this um, when you have roots like this notice they're complex what we want to do is we want to act, write the actual polynomial that fits that so let's take a look here so what we do is we say p of x equals then we do notice it's always x minus the root so it's x minus 1 minus 2i times x minus 1 plus 2i and one note about com about complex numbers is they always run in pairs conjugate pairs and these are conjugates because one has a minus one has a plus in between now with this it would be great if we were done at this point but we're not what we actually have to do is multiply this together all right and there's multiple many ways to go about it what I actually like to use is a grid model it's almost like a Punet square in biology when you're tracking genetics you just build a box okay in this case this box is going to have three rows and three columns I know it's not the neatest box but it'll do so I put this, and well before though I build my box, I actually need to distribute the negative into the parentheses. So this actually becomes x minus 1 plus 2i. This would be x minus 1 minus 2i. Okay? So I put one of the trinomials here. So x minus 1 and plus 2i. Okay? And then I put another one here. x minus 1 minus 2i all right so then we just multiply to fill each square we multiply so it'd be x times x so x squared goes into this spot then x times that would be negative x and then x times that would be negative I mean positive 2i x then we do it with this row so this means negative x 1 then negative 2i then we do it with this row negative 2i x uh, what is that negative 2 positive 2i and then finally negative 4i squared all right so the last thing to do is just add all these terms together there's some cool things going on here for instance notice you have a negative 2i x and a positive 2x since you are adding those get canceled the same with these two terms so when you add, there's much fewer terms to put together. So finally, our polynomial is p of x equals x squared. Notice there's two of these guys, so that's minus 2x plus 1 minus 4i squared. But you know what? I don't know of any polynomial that actually has a visible i in it. But if you remember i squared is simply negative 1 so we can change this to negative 4 times negative 1 or positive 4 so this becomes x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus 4 
so that is equal to 5. And this, according to the fundamental theorem of algebra, is our polynomial. Okay? So let's try a second one of these just to make sure. Here we have roots of negative 2, 2 minus i, but wait a minute. Complex numbers run in conjugate pairs. So what you have to realize is there is actually a third root here of 2 plus i that has to be in place. Okay. Now this time we have three roots that we have to deal with. So our polynomial, when we follow our rules as before, becomes x plus 2. Remember it's x minus the root. And then x minus 2 minus i and x minus 2 plus i. Okay. And then we, once again, have to multiply. I know it's a little tedious here, but it's a good practice to be in. So what I'm going to do is deal with the complex numbers first. That gets rid of the i's, and we don't have to deal with them anymore. Okay, so we do like we did in the previous problem. All right, x, negative 2, positive i. And then we just do our multiplications again. Let's see here. That's negative 2x, 4, uh, 2i, and then ix, and then negative 2i, and then finally negative i squared. But remember, negative i squared is really equal to positive 1. Okay, so now we can cancel that, 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 and that. And we get this polynomial. It would be x squared minus 4x plus 5. Okay? But we're not done yet because we also have this guy here to multiply through. And you don't have to build a box to do that one. You don't need the organizational tool. Remember, you could just take the x, distribute it through given you x to the fourth, I mean x to the third, minus 4x cubed squared, okay, plus 5x. Then we distribute the 2, so that would be plus 2x squared, minus 8x, plus 10. And then we combine like terms, and we'll have our polynomial. So that's x cubed, minus 4x squared, oops, sorry about that. Not 4x squared. What am I saying? That should be 2x squared because negative 4x and 2x. Okay. So let's see here again. Minus 2x squared minus 3x plus 10. And this is our polynomial. Okay. I just want to look at one more and then we'll wrap this up. Okay. Not this one this guy and I want to talk about what it means to have a multiplicity okay this is a new concept here when a root has a multiplicity that means that it appears twice all right in a multiplicity it appears more than once It is a double or a triple or quadruple root so if it has a multiplicity of two that means the root is used twice that is a multiplicity of three it's used three times a multiplicity of four it's used four times so when we do this when we write out our polynomial, though, it's very easy to handle. We do x minus c. Our root is this again. So it's x plus 1, all right? But it has a multiplicity of 2, so we square it, all right? Then x minus 2 squared, okay? It's as simple as that. And then we have to FOIL it out, of course. And if we FOIL this out, it is x squared plus 2x plus 1. If you multiply that out, it is x squared minus 4x plus 4. And then, of course, you have to multiply the big guy out. All right. And you can use the box method like I've shown you before. All right. Or you can just use distribution again. Should be a square here. All right. So x there, x to the fourth minus 4x cubed. I'm using distribution. I'm taking this, multiply it times every term, plus 4x squared. Then I take the 2x and multiply it through. So plus 2x cubed minus 
8x squared plus 8x. Then you multiply the 1 through. So that would be plus x squared minus 4x plus 4. All right. And now you just combine like terms, of course, and you'll be done. Okay. So this is x to the fourth. So we've got this and this, which combine to negative 2x cubed. Then you've got this, this, and this. Okay. So that's negative 4x squared plus 1x squared is minus 3x squared. And then finally you have this and this. So that's plus 4x plus 4. And you have your polynomial. Okay? All right. That's been great. Hoping all is well. Thank you.